From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Pauline Morris at Victor Turner's office, Continental Adjustment Bureau. Oh, hi, Pauline. How are you? Just fine, thank you. Johnny, Mr. Turner asked me to get in touch with you and find out what you're working on at the moment. Why, nothing. I was thinking of going to New York for a couple of days. Well, good. Would you be interested in handling a case for us while you're there? Oh, Pauline, I'm going to New York on a vacation. Well, this shouldn't take too much time, and... Johnny, it's really one of our most important accounts. Well, how much commission can I figure on? Do you want the truth? Sure. Practically none. Oh, fine. Why does Turner foist these things on me? Oh, I guess it's my fault. I told him I thought you might do it as a favor to us. For Mr. Turner or Continental Adjustment Bureau? No. For you? Okay, what is it? Well, Wait, uh... better still, why don't you tell me about it over dinner? Say, at the Crystal Room? Oh, I'd love that. I've been wanting to go there for months. Hey, you know something? I've been waiting for an excuse to take you there for years. Eight o'clock, Pauline? Eight o'clock. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter. It started quite pleasantly. Oh, no, Johnny, let's go back to the table and eat. I'm tired of dancing. Yeah, but once you sit down, you'll start talking business again. Well, of course. I will. I do have a job to keep. Okay, okay. Frustrating girl. (laughs) Besides, the sooner you clear up this case, the longer you'll have for a vacation in New York. I said okay. Here you are. Sit down. Thank you. All right, Miss Morris. Let's have the bad news. Well, the insurance company is Delaware Eastern Liability, New York office. Yes, ma'am. Their client who filed the complaint is a large dress manufacturing company. Uh, Century Styles Incorporated. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and if you can manage to pick up one of their latest creations in my size while you're there, I love you forever. Yes, ma'am. Now, let's dance. No, no, wait. The auditors found a deficit in their books, $4,285. Well, naturally, the head of the company wants a settlement. Yes, ma'am. Now, let's... And, Johnny, your biggest problem will be Mr. Elliot. Mr. Robert Elliot, who I understand is something of a personality problem. He can't be any more of a problem than I'm having with you. Now... Let's dance. Expense account item two, $28.63. Train fare and incidentals getting from Hartford to Manhattan. With me, I took all the necessary information concerning the indemnity claim of Century Styles with Delaware Eastern Liability and Trust. I arrived at Grand Central at 205 and was checked in at the New Western by 230. Air brisk, sky clear, weather cold. Expense account item three, 10 cents, phone call. To Robert P. Elliott, Century Styles Incorporated. Mr. Elliott said he would be happy to see me, so I went right over and found a four-story building that housed two floors of factory and two floors of offices. The factory was the usual crowded, noisy collection of machinery and people. The general offices, overstuffed and overheated and overcrowded. Girls, girls, you must get ready. Come on, girls. Now, everybody... What the Sam Hill? Jenny, you'll just have to reduce. How can we fit you when the pins keep popping out? Uh, pardon me. Uh, I'm looking for Mr. Elliott. You are? True. Well, I'm Robert Elliott. Oh, you must be Mr. Dollar. That's right. Stand by, Jenny Sweet. Please, these pins. We all suffer for our art child. Now, bear up. I'll deliver you soon. This way, Mr. Dollar, to a quiet corner. Mr. Elliott was small and wiry, wearing white warachis, green slacks, a corduroy jacket, and a flower print shirt of no identifiable color. As I followed him across the large and elegant showroom floor, I couldn't help stealing glances at the merchandise, animate and inanimate. Everything I saw was strictly high class, a group of goddesses. Mr. Elliot led me through a pair of swinging doors into an office with a carpet so thick I couldn't see my shoe tops. A desk in Russian gray sprawled in one corner. My office, Mr. Dollar. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you're here, that the insurance company heeded my call. Well, I hope we can help you straighten this matter out. Well, it's scandalous. It's truly scandalous. $5,000, really. Uh, the complaint said 4285 Mr. Elliot. Well, that's almost 5000 Besides, I like to deal in round figures. 
Brett and Arnby to my auditors, and they said that you are the a very important investigator in insurance circles. Well, I'm flattered. Did they happen to leave a copy of their findings? Yes, they did. They most certainly did. But before I give it to you, I must explain how awful this situation is. Now, please do. Well, you've no doubt heard of Patricia's things. No, no, uh, I don't think... Yeah. Patsy's things? Why, of course... Oh, you're just joking. I am Patsy's things. In fact, I made Patsy's things. It's our highest priced line, you know, evening dresses. Oh, you don't say. I definitely do. Oh, the nights of thankless work that go into creating just one gown. One supreme gown for the season. Oh, I'm sure. I'll tell you, Mr. Dollar, it's... Well, it's a thankless task in one respect. It... But that's a different story. What I'm trying to say is that this loss is devastating me. I mean it. I must. I simply must have an adjustment immediately. Well, the insurance company sympathizes with you, Mr. Elliott. We'll try to adjudicate it as quickly as possible. Oh, that's comforting. That's very comforting. Oop. Rob Elliott here. In my opinion, hats are just not important this year. Yes? No, 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 no. Positively no. No advance layouts on the new line. Not until later. No, not tomorrow. No, I can't. I simply cannot. Oh. Anything wrong? Well, that's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to explain. This matter simply must be handled with all dispatch, Mr. Dollar. You see, my firm operates on a... On a... Shoestring? Well, <laughs> spider's hair would be more apt. $5,000. Mr. Dollar, that comparatively small loss is stopping me from showing my new line of patsy's... The evening dresses. Yes, yes. I must show them before months end or I'll lose my entire opportunity for profit. So, you see, I must have compensation for the loss. I think I get the picture, Mr. Elliot. Now, there. That, 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 that was the newspaper calling, and it's terrible. They all want advanced viewings of my new line, and I simply can't afford to. I, I can't afford to pay my help to produce the models. Mr. Dollar, for three agonizing months I worked. Frantically, I drew, I cut, I stitched. And not one warp or woof of my creation will be exhibited, can be exhibited, unless this matter is settled. Then suppose we get down to business. Well, the business is that some ruthless brigand pussyfooted off with my company's money. Well, do you have any idea? I don't. I don't have... No, no, no. Not so much as a footprint or a strand of hair. And, Mr. Dollar, if you don't find out who it was and return my money, I'll be cremated. Professionally cremated, that is. Why, I might even have to join the Foreign Legion. Well, don't worry, Mr. Elliott. If your loss is verified, and apparently a reputable auditing firm has already done that, I can assure you that the insurance company will reimburse that loss in the time it takes to get a check made out and in the mail. Oh, good. I'll be forever grateful. Well, while you're in this mood, would you mind me having a little closer rundown on what happened? Well, the auditors simply uncovered a shortage, that's all. I know that much, Mr. Elliott. May I see their report? Yes, of course. There. Isn't that binder an atrocious dream? <laughs> well, if you say so. I'd like to keep this, Mr. Elliott, to verify my report. Of course, Mr. Dollar. Anything, anything at all. Just save me. I left Mr. Elliott in a fainting condition, went back to my hotel, and studied the auditor's report. The obvious conclusion after an hour's reading was that the funds had been embezzled by someone in the bookkeeping department. A series of crude erasures and bad fumblings indicated that whoever had done it had been something less than expert. In fact, he or she had been almost idiotic. The next morning, I confirmed my own findings with Mr. Brett at the auditor's office. We uncovered the loss two days ago and advised Mr. Elliott to contact his insurance company first. Sure. Dollar, any reservations on your part? No, no, Elliot's got a legitimate loss here. I'm sending in my report today. He should be compensated in another two days. And he'll be relieved to know about that. <laughs> I know, I met him. Well, what's your next step? Well, we'll pay off Elliot so he won't have heart failure. But of course, we'll try to make recovery. I noticed the losses were in book series F6 through G10. Yes. Did you talk to personnel over there at his place? Mm-hmm. A fellow by the name of Forbes handled that series for them. Uh -huh. In the accounting office, of course. Oh, yes. Yeah. Been with Sensory Styles for five years. Where is he now? He's still there. Huh? Mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of funny, too. A fellow pulling a crude job like this and not trying to run out. No, he's still working for them. Mm -hmm. well, maybe he isn't the one at that. Forbes was in charge of those books. I don't see how it could possibly be anyone else. No, neither do I, Mr. Brett. May I use your phone? Oh, sure. Help yourself. I noticed all the money was stolen in the last four weeks. Yes. You'd think you'd at least have strung it out. Greedy, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Hello. District Attorney's office, please. My name's Dollar. I want to talk to someone about a warrant. Embezzling funds, grand theft. Oh, hold it, please. Forbes. What's his full name? Uh, Sheldon Thomas Forbes. Thanks. Sheldon Thomas Forbes, bookkeeper at Century Styles Incorporated. Hmm? Good. I'm on my way. 
Expense account item four. Three dollars. Cab fare to the offices of John L. Gregory, deputy district attorney. I explained the situation to Mr. Gregory and furnished him with the auditor's report. An hour later, I was back at Century Styles with our friend, Mr. Elliott. Well, if it has to be, it has to be. There he is. Forbes? Hmm. Third desk. Sheldon Thomas Forbes was a tall, dark-complexioned man in his early 30s. His hair was black, straight, and closely cropped. His features regular, not good, not bad. The kind of man you see every day on the street. Somehow, the kind of man I hadn't expected would swipe $5,000. Oh, Mr. Forbes? Yes? This gentleman would like to see you. I feel like Brutus. Oh, why don't you run along, Mr. Elliott? I'll handle it from here. Oh, thank you. Hello? Sheldon Forbes? Yes. My name's Dollar, Continental Adjustment Bureau. We represent Delaware Mutual Liability. They cover this firm for losses by theft and fire. Uh Uh-huh. Two days ago, the auditing firm of Brett and Iron Beach located a loss of almost $5,000 here. Naturally, the matter came to our attention. I'd like to talk to you about it. Why me? There's every indication that the loss has occurred in the particular accounts you've been handling. Uh Uh-huh. You do handle books F6 through G10? Yes. Will you step over here a minute, please? Sure. Would you look at this, please? Your figures? Yes. Your handwriting? Uh-huh. Your entries and your initials? Yes. Well, what do you have to say? Nothing. Look, you know why I'm talking to you, why I came to you first. Yes. Still nothing to say? Nothing. Well, aren't you being a little silly? Why? I stole the money. You've proved it. What am I supposed to say? You admit it. How can I deny it? Okay, we've got that much covered. Well, look, my company's interested in recovery of $4,285. Do you understand? I think so. Oh, now, Forbes, come to your senses. What do you want to do? Go to jail, or do you want to give the money back? (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Oh, no, I don't think it's funny. I doubt if you will. I've got 16 cents in my pocket. Will that help? Where's the money? I haven't got it, Mr. Dollar. You'll have to take me to jail. Shall we go? Okay. There'll be another intriguing episode of the Forbes matter tomorrow. What makes a man steal? Everybody's tried to answer that question at one time or another. Tomorrow I'll take a crack at it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Rob Elliott here, Mr. Dollar. Uh, Century style? I know, Mr. Elliott. How are you today? Terrible, Mr. Dollar. I feel terrible. I'm calling from the district attorney's office. You there about Sheldon Forbes? Yes, I had no idea I'd have to act. They want me to sign a complaint. Well, that's pretty usual, Mr. Elliott. Forbes admitted taking the money from your firm. He's guilty as charged. You're the injured party. They want to get on with the prosecution. Oh, dear. So you do whatever they say, Mr. Elliott. Well, will it affect my payment at all? A payment of the claim? No, not a bit. Your check's on the way to you right now. Oh, that's a relief. Now, how about you? Are you going back to Hartford? Uh, Should I thank you now? You can thank me, but I'm not going back. What? My job's just beginning. I have to recover the money for the insurance company. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter theft of nearly $5,000. Expenses continued. Item four, I think it is. $10 deposited on a rented car. First stop, Central Division Headquarters, where I was informed that Sheldon Thomas Forbes had been formally arraigned and was being held in the city jail. 
Second stop, an address on 56th Street. Second floor next to a dental laboratory. And on the door it said Edward Gumby, attorney at law. And below it said walk in. So I did. Well, hello out there. Mr. Gumby? Yes, sir. Come on in. It's warmer in here. Edward Gumby was standing in front of a gas heater in the inner office, which consisted of nothing more than a telephone, a desk, and a dozen law books. He was a medium-sized man, about 40 or so, a little tired, a little seedy, but he had a nice grin. Dollar? Dollar? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Gumby. You don't know me. I'm with Continental Adjustment Bureau, representing Delaware Eastern Liability in this Forbes matter. Oh, yes, 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 of course. understand you're representing Sheldon Forbes, is that right? Well, I don't know whether it is or not, Mr. Dollar. I happened to be in magistrate's court this morning when Forbes was arraigned. I took him on because he didn't have counsel and the court appointed me. I don't know whether he took me on or not. Uh, sit down, sit down. Oh, thanks. New York is the coldest city in the world. Absolutely the coldest when it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Look, I don't want to take up a lot of your time, Mr. Gumby. Time? <laughs> I've got time, boy. That's all I've got. What's on your mind? Your client, mostly. He's admitted guilt. But, of course, we're interested in recovering the money he stole. $4,285. Yeah. Well, I can't blame your company for that. Well, prosecution could probably be stopped if we made recovery. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I thought I'd tell you this and in case you had any influence on Forbes. Well, I appreciate that, Mr. Dollar. It's very understandable. But, as I say, I was court-appointed. I really haven't talked to him yet. So I'll have to confess I don't have any influence with him at all yet. Struck me as a nice sort of chap. Mm -hmm. Don't quite get it myself. Probably an explanation for it. Married once, I understand, and widowed right after the war. He worked for Century Styles about five years. Have you talked to the police yet? No. I understand they're going to work on it today. Maybe they'll have a little more information for you about the recovery. Probably find the money in an old sock or something like that. That's the way these things generally run, you know. I agreed with Mr. Gumby. That was truly the way these kind of cases usually ran. And I was a little surprised that afternoon when I spoke to the officers at the city jail. They reported that a complete search of Forbes' apartment and automobile unearthed nothing like the missing money. They further reported that they had found no reliable evidence of any material possessions that the money could have been spent for. My next stop, city jail. He won't tell you anything. Hmm? Kept his trap shut all the time he's been in here. As far as we've been able to find out, no previous record, no background. We're checking his prints with Washington. I don't know about this one. You know, you ex cop wise. Know what I mean? Won't give a police officer the time of day. That means he could have been in before. Now, on the other hand, it could mean he's just scared. That too. Well. <clears throat> Well, how what? Take it easy, Forbes. This is Mr. Dollar. He wants to talk to you. Hello, Forbes. Hi. See you later, Dollar. Yeah, thanks, Sergeant. Just give a yell when you're finished. Right. They treating you okay? Swell. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to anybody. Why not? I just don't want to see anybody. That's all. Now, you're acting like a baby, Forbes. You'll have to talk to somebody. Don't lecture me, Mr. Insurance Investigator. I've had all the lectures I want from myself. I don't know why you're here. I, I thought we settled our business yesterday. The whole thing's just a technicality. I've been arraigned. They've got my confession. I'll go into a court, and they'll give me the business. Well, what are you doing in here, anyway? It's a swell day to be outside. Yeah, it is. Want to smoke? Oh, thanks. Well, why are you here? To help you out of this mess, if you'll let me. <laughs> That's funny. Not a bit. Why should you want to help me? Well, it's not because I have any use for you, mister. You're nothing to me but a guy who stole a pile of money. My job is to get it back, $4,285. Oh, that. Yes, that. Now, how about it, Forbes? Isn't it enough that I'm in jail? That, that I'll go to prison? That's enough for the police, but not for my insurance company. 
Oh, it's too bad about your insurance company. No, it's too bad about you. You're being foolish. A whole or partial recovery can have a great deal to do with what happens to you from now on. Three years is the minimum sentence, you know. Twelve years maximum. Now, is it worth it? Sure. Sure, it's worth it. And I don't want to be foolish anymore. But I have been foolish. I took it and I spent it. Every dime of it. There's no way to pay it back. What did you spend it on? It uh, doesn't make any difference. It may make a lot of difference. You can redeem it, turn it back. Oh, no, I can't. Why did you take the money? All right, look. Your salary's close to a hundred a week. You're single. Wasn't that enough to live on? Why don't you get out of here? I don't have anything to tell you. Ever been in trouble before? Huh? Under another name in another state? No, They no. consider backgrounds like that when a man comes up to be sentenced. Forbes, this is your first offense. I know. Are you trying to shield someone? Why don't you go away? Have you been trying the market? Did you gamble? No, no. Just, just leave me alone. I won't tell you a thing, If Dollar. you bought something with it or gave it to someone, if it can be recovered in some part... No, no, I tell you. Just go away and leave me alone. I'd like to. Believe me, I would. You're a thief, Forbes, and you're going to get what's coming to you, but I can't leave you alone. Listen. No, you listen to me. If I don't get the information I want from you, I'll get it elsewhere. I'm going to be very honest with you. Eastern Delaware wrote a comprehensive policy on century styles promising to indemnify them in full for every loss caused by fire or theft on their premises. In case you didn't know, Forbes, an insurance company won't take the word of some guy sitting in a jail cell. Sitting in a jail cell feeling sorry for himself where there's cash to be recovered. Now, you swiped it within the last month. You have something to show for it somewhere, somehow. Whatever you spend it on or whoever you spend it on, remember that that money is the same as stolen property... A car, a diamond ring, or something. Now, if you give it to someone or spend it, when it wasn't yours, it's still redeemable, and we mean to redeem it. All right, now, what do you have to say? This won't do you any good. Don't, don't try to bulldoze me. I'm no punk caught crawling into a drugstore window late at night. I'm a college graduate. I've been in the business world ten years or better. I know what I want to tell you and what I want to keep to myself, and I don't want to talk to you about this. You or anybody else. I can't make it any clearer than that, do you understand? And there's no way or no person who can make me talk about it. I took the lousy money, I've admitted that. I did a bad job of it. You caught me. I confessed, and you've got me. Now, what more is there? That's the whole story. <sighs> okay. Have it your way, Forbes. Go away. Just go away. On my way out, I saw his attorney, Edward Gumby, on his way in to see Forbes. I waited around the sergeant's desk. Accidentally, on purpose, I glanced at the admitted visitor's register. Only two people had contacted Forbes since his arrest, Gumby and myself. That struck me as odd. A glance at his folder named no close relatives, named no one, in fact. I was thinking about that when Gumby came out from his visit. Gumby looked worn out. Uh, hiya. Hi. How'd you do? Not so good. Hey, tell me something. He asked you to contact a girl or anyone? Nope. I don't think he has a girl. I don't think he has anybody. You want some coffee? Yeah, good idea. We slushed across the street and found a diner. Expense account item five forty two cents. Coffee and sinkers for Ed Gumby and myself. I think you're going to strike out, Dollar. I already have. And I think I have too. Huh? You know what I've been talking to him about in there all this time? The same thing as you. Restitution. But he won't open his mouth about it. He did say one thing, though. He wants me to waive a jury trial and go up for sentencing. What? Yeah. Plead guilty and take it. He's sure to get at least three years. What can I do? Yeah. Got any ideas? Oh, I've got a lot of ideas, Dollar, and all of them make me sick inside. That boy's not a criminal. He took that money because he was desperate about something. You know that from the awkward way he took it. He spent it on something and he won't talk about it. But now he's about to ruin his whole life in spite of what you or I or anybody else tries to do for him. All he has to do is give back the money or promise restitution or call up a friend and borrow it. With his clean background, the court had listened to a mercy plea. You told him all this? 
I told him. I told him and you told him. And what does he do? He waves his right. I tell you, I'm going to hate to file this waiver, but I've got to do it. Yeah, and how you feel? More coffee? No. No, thanks. Dollar, you know what Forbes is? What? He's something I call a, a calendar job. Calendar job? Yeah. 33 years old. Now, now think about that. Born with one war just ended. Raised in a depression and then bangle. Another war. You might say the first 25 years of his life, nothing but war and depression. Or the effects thereof. A calendar job. Well, apparently it's what he wants. But, Mr. Dollar, I'm going to hate to see him go to prison. You know something, Mr. Gumby? So am I. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Forbes matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, a sudden twist in the case that throws all the usual theories right out the window. The unexpected. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ed Gumby, Mr. Dollar. Attorney for Sheldon Forbes. Oh, hello, Mr. Gumby. How are you? Oh, I don't know. The hearing's been set for 2.30 this afternoon. Okay, I'll be there. No need to, particularly. As I told you yesterday, he requested me to waive trial and plead guilty. Well, won't he be sentenced today? No, this is just a preliminary hearing. He'll probably be sentenced before the week's out, though. The court will simply consider the waiver and inform him of his rights today. Oh. Anything I can do? No, I don't think so. I'm going to try to talk to him again and get him to reconsider the waiver. I doubt if I'll have much luck, but I'll try all he has to do is return the money he stole. Well, buck up, Mr. Gumby. If he won't return it, maybe someone else will. Hmm? What do you mean? I'm going to try and find out what he did with it. My company wants it back, sure. But we also want Forbes to have a fair chance. You're pretty decent, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter. Embezzlement and a very frustrating case. Expense account continued. Item six, $3.50, lunch. For myself and a Mr. Arnold Haven, head of the accounting department for Century Styles Incorporated. Mr. Haven, a tall, balding man in a dark suit, had ulcers. His poached egg and dry toast didn't interest him too much. Uh, well, what's going to happen to Forbes? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Haven. That depends on several things. Right now, I have to tell you that it looks like he'll go to prison. Worse than that, it looks like he wants to go to prison. He's waived trial. Prison. That's too bad. Too bad. I always liked Sheldon Forbes. You, uh, you hired him, did you, Mr. Haven? Yes, I hired him. He was a good man right from the start. He did his job, and he did it well. I never had a complaint against Forbes. Why do you suppose he stole the money? You've got me, Mr. Dollar. We paid him the going rate. That's a good salary for accountants. He seemed happy enough with it. Well, he knew he was in line for substantial raises. Uh-huh. I could understand it in a way if he had a family and heavy responsibility. Or if he played the market, or if he gambled. But Forbes, he just baffles me. Yeah, it baffles me, too. Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Well, the people around the office, they're, uh, they're pretty upset about this. Any particular people, Mr. Haven? Everybody. But anyone in particular? A girl, for instance. Oh, oh a girl, yes, I see. Well, no. Did he go out with any girl in your office? No, no, most of them are married. No, at least as far as I know, Forbes didn't go with any of the girls there. 
He kept to himself. Oh, he might have lunched with one or the other now and then, but... No, no, he more or less kept to himself. Uh Uh-huh. Well, the reason I asked you, Mr. Haven, is that what little I've been able to find out about his personal life isn't very helpful. My company wants the money back. We're willing to give him a fair break if we can get it back. He's pretty stubborn about cooperating. Yes, we know about that, Mr. Dollar. But how can we give him a break if he doesn't want us to? And we can't find out anything about him. Look, if there's anything you can think of, any any reason he might have had for taking the money... And I've racked my brain. I can't think of any reason. I... Oh. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. I did notice a change coming, Forbes. It was about a month or six weeks ago. Oh, it was nothing, really. It was just, a, I guess, an anxiety about him. Well, he took all the money within the last four weeks. Would that correspond? Roughly, yes. Well, that's a start. I hope. I returned to the accounting offices of Century Styles with Mr. Haven and spent two hours questioning different members of his staff regarding Sheldon Forbes. His habits and his personality were pretty much the same as Haven himself had described them. Expense account item seven, four dollars, gasoline. I put a tank full of gas in my rented car and went over to an apartment on 59th Street where Sheldon Forbes had lived. According to the penciled note above the first door to the right of the entrance, Mrs. Anastasia Kanopka was the manager. Yes, what is, please? You're Mrs. Kanopka? Yes. What do you want, mister? I understand Mr. Sheldon Forbes lives here, is that right? Oh, yes. Bad. bad. I hear he steals monies. Bad. He, he not in, uh, in uh, jail, I think. Yes, I know about that, Mrs. Kanopka. I'm from the insurance company, and we're involved in this case. We're trying to recover some of that money if we can. I wonder if you'd help me. I fix dinner for my husband. He's come home from work. It so... won't take long. Uh, what I do? Well, I, I want to know about Sheldon Forbes. What? The works, Mrs. Kanopka. Did he drink? Gamble? Did he stay in nights or go out? Did he pay his rent? He always pay his rent. You are policeman? An insurance investigator. Please, sometime else. Maybe you speak to my husband. He speak much better than me. But it's important now. I talk to Mr. Forbes on telephone. He called me from jail. He say I no have to answer any questions. No, no, you don't have to answer any questions, Mrs. Kanopka. But I'd sure appreciate it if you would. My husband home pretty soon. You ask him. You can help him, possibly. Now, would you like to help him in this trouble? All right, mister. But how I know these things you ask about the men who live here? Well, well, look, how about his friends? Who visited him? I, I cannot say. No visitor. Was he a good tenant? No trouble. Like Mr. O'Sullivan on third floor. Mr. O'Sullivan always drunk. Called police twice. Mr. Forbes, no drink whiskey. Uh Uh-huh. Did you ever meet his girl? Girl? Sure. He had a girlfriend, didn't he? Oh, I think you mistake. I know I ever see girlfriend here. All right. How long have you known him? Five, six years, maybe. Ever since he moved in here to this place. But no girl? No. Well, how'd he spend his time? Work. He worked very hard. No, I mean besides working at the office. How else did Forbes spend his time? I... Oh, he poor feller, that one. Huh? Sure, he steals money, but he poor feller just the same. For him, I feel. Yeah. Mr. Forbes, he quiet and, and he think. I know he live up in that little room quiet and think. He does all the time think. No whiskey, no girls. Oh, he paints sometimes, listen to music, think. Oh, my husband didn't burn. Please, you go. Well, uh, just a minute. I'd like to see his apartment if I can. No, no matter. Here. You bring back key, please. Sure. Thank you, Mrs. Kanopka. The apartment Sheldon Forbes called home was as dismal as the neighborhood. A tiny closet kitchen, a bed that came out of the wall, a pair of grimy windows that looked across the court onto another pair of equally grimy windows. The furniture was threadbare and dusty. A small ironing board and iron attested to the fact that Sheldon Forbes laundered his own shirts. Other small evidences of frugality were about the premises. A hot plate and a can of souring cream. Two suits of clothes, neatly brushed and pressed, but inexpensive. 
The record player and a collection of a half a dozen good albums were the only sign of material accomplishment. The painting materials, easel, canvas, and oils were also inexpensive. No liquor, no jewelry, no expensive clothes. Nothing that cost $4,285 or anything like it. Here's your key, Mrs. Kanopka. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I thank you. Well, what do you think? I think he's had a very lonely life here. Oh, Doc. Yes. Lonely is the word. Lonely. Uh, oh, wait, has he got a car? In back, through alley. Thanks. It was a Ford. Vintage of 1946. Tightly locked up. The paint was scaling away, the tires worn down, the mileage 77,000 miles. He certainly hadn't blown the money on a fancy car. Now I felt completely frustrated. Expense account item 8, 79 cents, dinner. I had it in a neighborhood restaurant called the 79er. A place, I learned, where Sheldon Forbes frequently took his evening meal. The restaurant manager, a man named Alexander Dupolis, remembered Forbes and he liked him. A woman who ran a bakery shop across the street also remembered him as the young man who bought a roll there every night. Probably the roll to go with a lonely cup of coffee in his room the next morning. She liked him too. All in all, I was getting a composite picture of Sheldon Forbes that didn't look quite right. Whatever he was to the people who knew him casually, he wasn't a man who ever had any money to spend. I dropped in at the city jail about 7.30, and I was surprised to find lawyer Edward Gumby sitting on a bench, briefcase in hand. Dollar? Hello, Mr. Gumby. Nothing new, huh? Well, that's the way it goes, I guess. We had some action today. Oh? Yeah. The hearing was this afternoon. Man from the district attorney's office took about 15 minutes to lay out the evidence against Forbes and make the charges. Uh Uh-huh. I spent the whole time pleading with Forbes not to go ahead with the waiver. Did I miss anything? No, he wouldn't open up at all. Just said he'd spent the money. I couldn't talk him out of the waiver, so it went through. When will he be sentenced? They set the date for Friday. I don't know whether they'll get around to it or not. I'd like to talk to him again. Has he been moved yet? No. I thought he'd be transferred to the sheriff's office. Well, ordinarily he would, but since he waived trial, they announced bail. It's proper procedure in cases like this. Gives him a couple of days to straighten out his affairs. What? Somebody bailed him out? I did. Oh. Has he left yet? Uh Uh-uh. Won't get out till late. That's when the shift changes. Think it's worth trying to see him? Yeah. I think I'll stick around, Mr. Gumby. I gotta find out something about this case. An hour later, when Sheldon Forbes emerged from the doorway and turned right, I was following him. When he caught a cab and headed uptown, I caught one and stayed right with him. When he got out at the Empress Theater and walked around to the stage door, I was standing by the alley entrance. Ten minutes later, he came back out, hailed a cab. Once more, I followed. This time, I followed him to his apartment on 59th Street. I waited 15 minutes before I went in. Forbes? Forbes? Hey, Forbes, it's me, Johnny Dollar. I want to talk to you. It took me a few seconds to understand what it was. I got a couple of whiffs of it coming from under his door. Forbes! The room was acrid, stinging with gas fumes, and Sheldon Forbes was stretched down on the floor of his six-foot kitchen. When I picked him up and carried him out, I didn't know whether he was alive or dead. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Forbes matter tomorrow. Tomorrow. A switch in the case that starts a real chase and a race against time. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is the police operator. 
operator. Are you the party who called for an ambulance? Yes, didn't you get it? It's on the way, sir. I'm calling to verify the circumstances. Attempted suicide by gas. Yes, sir, we have that. The victim's name? Sheldon Forbes, F-O-R-B-E-S. Forbes? And your connection, sir? Relative, perhaps? No, no relation. Insurance investigator. I just found him. Will you please remain there until the officers arrive? Are you kidding? I asked you, but... Oh. Oh, well, thank you very much. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter. Sheldon Forbes pleaded guilty to a $4,285 embezzling charge. He waived jury trial and was awaiting sentence when he was bailed out of jail, went home, and turned on the gas. Thirty seconds after I dragged him from the apartment, I called the police emergency squad. In a matter of minutes, they arrived, and a couple of interns were working on Forbes with a pull motor in that dingy, dirty, badly lighted hallway. There was no telling how much gas Forbes had breathed in, or for how long a period after he went into his apartment, the gas jet had been open. Hand me that hypo, Al. Thanks. Swab. Okay. He, uh... He alive? Barely. You the fellow found him, mister? Yeah. Hard to say what can happen on these kind. That shot I just gave him should produce some reaction. Mm -hmm. This your place? His. You know who he is? His name's Sheldon Forbes. Nice looking guy. Well, I'll need that. Yeah, thanks. I think we're getting somewhere now. Hey, look, can I help? No. Well, you better hand me one of those, too. I'm able to be pretty sick if... Oh, hey, good. He's, he's catching on. Yeah. Let's have a little increase, Al. Up it just a little. Okay. Hold it there. The intern and his assistant worked quietly and methodically. There was nothing I could do but stand and watch. After about a half an hour, the color of Forbes' skin seemed to me a little more close to normal. His eyes were still closed, though, and he showed no signs of movement. I waited. Okay, Al. You can kill the pull motor. I'm getting some pulse now. Respiration, too. Will he make it? Uh, it depends, mister. If he has any kind of heart condition, it'll be tough. We can tell more when we get him into a hospital. Nothing more we can do for him here. Okay, Al. Have the boys load him up. Let's get out of here. <clears throat> uh, now, mister, uh, you say he's a friend of yours? Just someone I knew. He's got you to thank, in case he makes it. Where'll he be? We'll take him over to Bellevue. All attempted suicides get over there. Mm-hmm. I'd like to talk to him when he comes around. Any idea when that'll be? No telling. Better phone in first. Police will want to talk to you. You give identification to headquarters when you call in? Yeah. Yeah, that's the third one tonight. What is it, the weather? Not for him. My job is to handle them, but I wonder why they do it. Oh, this guy's got a problem. He's out on bail, goes into court Friday to be sentenced. Embezzling charge. Oh. Seemed like a nice guy to look at. I think he probably is a nice guy. Well, I thought you said he was an embezzler. I did. Well, be sure and call in. Yeah, sure, doctor. Thanks. Good night. The uniformed officers outside the apartment house questioned me thoroughly regarding the circumstances of the attempted suicide. 
I told them what had occurred and gave them my business address for reference. They asked me to ride over to the station with them and verify the facts. I did. All of that took about two hours. When I was finished, I put in a call to Bellevue. No change in Sheldon Forbes' condition. Expense account item nine, 280, one theater ticket. That's what it cost me to see the last 15 minutes of a fairly bad musical play at the Empress Theater. When it was over, I walked around to the stage entrance. Hey, didn't quite get that, mister. Dollar. Dollar? Oh, uh, Mr. Dollar, uh-huh. Well, uh, what can I do for you? Between 6.30 and 7 o'clock tonight, a man came here to the stage entrance and talked to you. A lot of people talk to me here. That's my job, talking to them. One man in particular. His name is Sheldon Forbes. I uh, don't remember nobody named Forbes. Well, maybe he didn't give his name. He was a tall man, about my size, 30 or so, dark hair, clean cut. Wore a tweed suit. Mm-hmm. Uh, beats me. Did he come here to see somebody in the show? Is that it? He might have. I don't know. Well, how do you know he came here? I followed him. I saw him. Huh? It's a business, my business. I'm an investigator. Oh, oh. oh wait now. Did he have a hat on tonight? No, no, he didn't. A short haircut? Yeah, do you remember him? Sure, sure. What's he done? Struck me as a nice young fella. He's been around here a lot of times. Sheldon Forbes, yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize the name at first. Would you mind telling me why he comes around here? Comes here to see Betsy Walker. One of the girls in the show. Betsy Walker, is she his girlfriend? No, don't think so. Uh, It's like this. He comes here asking to see her, and she never sees him. You get it? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, who is she? Oh, she sings here, dances a little. Pretty girl. Have you ever seen her with Forbes? Well, I, I can't say. I guess not. Is she still here? Huh? Betsy Walker, is she still here? I'd like to talk to her. Well, she wouldn't be here this late. She finishes her bit in the second act. Could you tell me where she lives? No, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, boy. I can't tell you that. All right. Well, where can I phone her? Can't tell you that either. Uh, now, uh, why don't you drop around tomorrow? It's important I... tonight. Hey, look, would you do me a favor? Depends. What is it? Would you telephone Betsy Walker? Tell her my business and ask her if she'll see me. Well, suppose I can do that all right, Mr. Dollar. Uh, take a chair there. I'll see what I can do for you. The doorman did all right. Expense account, item 10, $2.65, cab fare. I gave up my rented car and had the cab driver find the address Betty Walker had given. It was a rather nice apartment in a rather nice part of town. and was almost one in the morning when I got there. She met me at the door, wrapped in a chenille dressing gown with cold cream on her face. Miss Walker? You must be Mr. Dollar. Yes. Uh, now, just wait a minute. Do you mind if I see some kind of identification or something like that? Oh, no, no. Here you are. Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, <laughs> you'd be surprised at some of the things some men will try. Come in, please. Thank you. I didn't quite understand Frank on the telephone. Frank? Oh, the doorman at the theater. Yes. I didn't know quite what to make of it. Goodness, are you really an insurance detective? Uh, Yes, and I'd appreciate you letting me see you tonight, Miss Walker. Sit down. Can I fix you a drink? No, no thanks. Uh, Frank mentioned something about Forbes. You're here because of him? Yes, Miss Walker. I understand that you know Forbes. No, uh, not exactly, that is. Uh, there's some reservation in the way you say that, Miss Walker. You know his name. Yes, I I know the name. Uh, can I ask you what this is all about? Routine investigation. I'm curious. How did you get my name? How am I connected with Sheldon Forbes? That's what I'd like you to tell me. Well... First, about my name. Forbes was at the theater earlier tonight asking for you. I understand he's been around there quite a bit. Yes. I really don't know how to tell you this, Mr. Dollar. I've only seen that man once in my life, honestly. He's... Oh, he's really quite impossible. I just... Oh, dear, this is so embarrassing to try to explain this. Maybe I can save you some embarrassment, then, if you'll answer one question. Sure, why not? Did Sheldon Forbes ever give you any presents? Yes. What? Well, uh, that cigarette box on the table there. And the lighter to go with it. 
Hmm. Tiffany's. Pretty, aren't they? Yeah, very. Also expensive. What else? Well, um, let me think. Um, oh, no, no, that wasn't from him. Oh, uh, that was the lamp over there. Mm Mm-hmm. And a first stole. May I see it? I'm afraid I gave that away. You did? I gave it to my kid sister who was visiting me last week. I already had one. Oh, I see. What else did he give you? I think that's about it. Except for orchids that used to come every night. A dozen orchids every night for the last month. You only saw him once and he gave you all these gifts? Oh, dear, I, I know how that must sound. I just... Look, it started a month or so, I guess. I got a card in my dressing room one night asking me to dinner. It was signed Sheldon Forbes. So? Well, I'd never heard of anybody named Sheldon Forbes, and I just tore the card up. But every night after that, I kept getting orchids. And the card. And then the gifts started to come. The cigarette box first. That's when I saw him. Uh-huh. I didn't even dine with him, Mr. Dollar. We had one drink, and I told him I had a headache. I see. But the gifts still kept coming. Flowers, invitations. I ignored them. I tried to send the things back, and I didn't know where to send them. Some I gave away, and some I've kept. I didn't want his gifts. He was nice, but I... Well, I just didn't want anything to do with him. When I did meet him, he was so different than what I had imagined. I mean, well, gee, I've had my share of stage door Johnny's, but this man was... Well, he just couldn't say a word without stumbling. He had no poise, no sophistication, nothing. All he had was money. He told you that? He didn't have to. Those gifts... Well, he didn't have money, Miss Walker. He worked for $82 a week as a bookkeeper. You must be mistaken. I'm afraid not. He stole the money to buy you all these things. Well, for heaven's sake. For heaven's sakes, and you caught him? Yeah. Forbes tried to commit suicide earlier this evening. Suicide? Oh, no. I'm sorry I had to come to you to get this information. He's refused all along to tell anybody what he did with the money. Will he go to prison? I'm afraid so. Oh, but it's crazy. We had nothing. He's just a name to me. He means nothing to me. Yeah. But apparently you mean something to him. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Forbes matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, proof that $4,285 worth of unrequited love can spell three years of prison... But sometimes there's an angle. In this case, a rather startling one. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Betsy Walker, Mr. Dollar. I'm up and around. Yes, thanks for calling. Have any time this morning? I think so. If possible, I'd like to come over to your apartment again and take an inventory of the gifts that Sheldon Forbes sent you. That'll be all right, sure. About an hour? Sure. Much last night thinking about all this. I mean, he stole that money because of me. You mustn't feel that way, Miss Walker. He knew what he was doing. You had no part in the theft. I have the gifts. Well, we may have to take those away from you. I don't mind that. I. You said he tried suicide. How is he this morning? I just talked to the hospital. He's going to be all right. But he has to go to prison? Yes. <sighs> Funny world, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter. More expenses. Items 11 to 16. $78.40. Cab fares, meals, accounting services, legal services, cab fares, and more cab fares. 
I made a comprehensive inventory at Betsy Walker's apartment and spent the rest of the day tracking down the places where the items had been purchased and ascertaining their retail values. Total, $2,780 worth of gifts. Bought with stolen money. Betsy Walker also told me that Sheldon Forbes had made appointments to meet her at various times at very expensive restaurants in New York. She had never once kept any of these appointments, but a check with the Waldorf, 21, the Stork, and several other places revealed that Forbes had always made elaborate arrangements to entertain her. His restaurant bills came to $835. The florist bill, $670. Total amount spent, $4,285. Total amount stolen, $4,285. $4,285. Century Styles Incorporated footed the bill in his unsuccessful courtship of Betsy Walker. Hello. Hi. Remember me, Forbes? Sure, insurance man. Well, what now? How do you feel? Okay. You saved me, didn't you? I suppose so. Why? Same reason you'd save a man who was dying. Huh. You know what I've been doing? What? Answering the questions you wouldn't answer. I met Betsy Walker. What? My job, Forbes. I had to. How did you know about her? I followed you night before last. When you got out on bail, I saw you go to the theater. Listen, you had no right to go to her. You have no right to involve her in any of this. Why didn't you think of that a month or so ago? It's the company's money you've been spending on her. I had every right, as unpleasant as it is. I suppose she knows all about me now. That's right, all. Boy, I sure must look like the prize sucker of all time. Just to hand her a laugh. She didn't think it was one bit funny. And Forbes, I don't think it's funny either. Then what are you standing here for, lording it over me? I'm not doing that at all. I'm just here to let you know how things are at the moment. All right. How are things? Well, first off, we took back all the gifts you gave her. Dirty scum. Don't get mad at me, Forbes. Get mad at yourself. I didn't steal the money and try to impress her. You did. Why didn't you leave it alone? What difference does the money make to you? Nothing to me, but it means something to my insurance company. They still want it back. And they'll get as much back as they can. Well, swell. Good for that. What do you want now? Your signature. Hmm? I think I trace most of it down. You want to look this over? Go ahead. Uh... Those figures about right? I suppose so. I didn't keep track. Approximately? I suppose so. You're pretty thorough, aren't you? We have to be. Will you sign this? No. It'll help to clear up our bookwork a little. What difference does it make now? We've got you cold. Okay. What difference does it make? Give me. Okay, thanks. It's all it means to you, isn't it? Hmm? Dollars and cents. Dollars and cents that were stolen, Forbes. Remember that. You wouldn't let me forget it. No, I wouldn't. You did the dumbest thing in the world. You stole nearly $5,000 trying to make an impression on a girl who didn't want to have a thing to do with you. You went about it wrong from top to bottom. You've acted like the great stone face ever since you've been found out. You wouldn't bother telling me about it. I had to go out and find out myself. Off the record, Forbes, what'd you do? See her on the stage one night? No, at the office. Office? Your office? No, not exactly. Ellie was having a showing for some buyers from the West Coast one day a few weeks ago. For those kind of showings, he hires models from the agency. Betsy's listed with one of the agencies. You know, she acts and sings and models. Oh, sure. Well, I happened to be upstairs when the showing was going on. There were a lot of publicity people there taking pictures and so on. And I saw her. She was wearing a black... A black dress, and her hair was soft... She's got a smile like all the sun risings. Are... Sounds silly. Not at all. It's just that I never in all my life saw anyone like it before. Yeah. I don't know how it is with other guys, but she was for me from then on. I, I couldn't get her out of my mind. I found out her name, and then I found out she worked in that show at the Empress Theater. Yeah. All I had was her name. I, I didn't know how to go about meeting her. I... I just didn't know. You figured a little money might attract it to you. I've heard that's the best way to do it. That's one way. Not the best way, kid. Probably not. The best way I could think of. What did you think about taking the money? I thought I'd be able to stick it back. I guess I really didn't think much beyond just meeting her. Having her 
look at me the way I... I wanted her to look at me. <laughs> what? It was the wrong way to go about it, sure. But then did you ever think of my alternative? Hmm? I thought of it. I pictured myself knocking on a door one night, and I could see her answering it. I'm Shelley Forbes, Betsy, I'd say. Clothes don't make the man, I'd say, while she sort of took in my tweed suit and the only coat I've got to my name. Listen, I'd say, I got an 8 by 10 apartment over on 59th Street. The halls always smell like cabbage, but I'm a heck of a fine guy. And I drive a 1946 Ford that misses a little, but it's good enough for us. Then I'd say, why don't you toss on your mink, and we'll go over to my dump, and we'll have a bottle of beer, and I'll tell you how much I love you. How about that? <laughs> Some alternative, huh? She makes more money in an hour than I make in a week. I couldn't even afford to keep her in cigarettes. Lord, I... I wanted her like nothing in my whole life. She might have taken you up on it, Forbes, if you'd put it that way. Yeah? What makes you think so? She wasn't impressed by any money or any gifts. <laughs> More than that, I met her. She's a pretty nice girl. Yeah. Up until the time I talked with Sheldon Forbes in the hospital, I'd always had my doubts about love happening at first sight. After my talk with him, I was convinced that it could and did happen to him. I was sorry that he didn't know quite how to handle it. I was also wondering... If I'd been in his shoes, would I have done the same thing? Expense account item 17, $4.90. I sent a wire to my home office telling them that the recovery would be in the amount of something like $2,500, obtainable on the redeemable gift items recovered. After that, I went back to my hotel. I was surprised to find Betsy Walker waiting in the lobby. Why, hello. I was afraid you might leave town. I wanted to talk to you. Sure, you just caught me. I was going upstairs and pack. What is it? Could we have a drink or something? Sure. Expense account item 18, $2, two drinks. For Betsy Walker and myself at the hotel bar. It was midday and there wasn't much action. She sat across from me, ordered an old-fashioned and asked for a cigarette. Sure. What'll happen to him? Forbes? Yes. Oh, he'll be sentenced Monday. They canceled the Friday scheduling because he was in the hospital. He'll go to prison? Yes. Have you seen him since he tried to kill himself? Just left him. I guess he feels awful. Yeah. I told you I haven't been able to sleep thinking about all this. Well, about him, I guess. Mm hmm Would he have to go to prison even if all the money was returned? Only half of it's redeemable. The rest, florist bills, restaurants and so on, just gone. How much does it come to, Mr. Dollar? Uh, short about 2000 roughly. If, well, if you had that money, what would happen to him? Oh, it'd be up to the court. I, I'd say he'd have a good chance of getting off if he changed his plea. Could I get him to change his plea? <laughs> I think you could get him to do anything. I want to pay it. You what? I want to pay that other 2000 for him and get him to change his plea. I'll make up the whole thing. Hey, now, look, Miss Walker, I, I know your motives might be the best, but you aren't responsible in any way for this man's actions. He stole money because of me. He tried suicide because of me. And now he's going to prison because of me. But you had nothing to do with it, no part of it. You may think I'm 22 years old. I'll be 29 next month. I'm not much of an actress or a singer or anything else. But I've been around this town and I know my way around. And I met all kinds. Whoever he is, whatever he's done, he's the first man I've ever known who actually went out on a limb for a girl he loved. I'm the girl and he's the man. You're serious. I probably won't remember his name a year from now, but that... Poor, stupid, wonderful dumbbell. He doesn't belong in any prison. He ought to get married to some nice girl somewhere. I want to help him get out of this trouble. Can I? Betsy, I... After all, he's given me something. 
Call it faith in mankind again, if you like. What's the kiss for? What you just gave me, Betsy. Faith. Expense account item 19, $48, hotel. Item 20, $37, meals. 21, $15, miscellaneous. 22, same as item 1, $28.63, fare back to Hartford. Total cost of investigation, $363.51. Remarks? She got Forbes to change his plea. She paid back the additional money. He comes to trial next week. He might get a suspended sentence. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, a trip south of the border where the flashing eyes of a dark-haired senorita spells plenty of, well, believe me, romance and trouble can go hand in hand. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Lillian Bayef, Sandra Gould, Jack Edwards, Herb Ellis, James McCallion, Parley Bear, John Stevenson, Howard McNair, Bob Bruce, and Junius Matthews. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>